Hi, how's everybody? Yeah, I'm glad that everybody knows Netflix. <laughs> um, so I'm Zubomi Imamura, senior software engineer from Netflix. Today I, I'm going to share our journey, how we migrate from UI data API monolith to well isolated microservice in Node.js Docker container. So why did we have a UI data API monolith from the first place? To understand that, let me start by share some business background about our company. You probably already knew we are a video streaming company. What you might not know is we have over 80 million subscribers worldwide. We stream our content more than 125 million hours per day. So that's tons of a lot of traffic to manage. Now user can view our content from hundreds of different kind of device. Each device has its own performance characteristic and form factor. So we need a very different kind of data to render each UI screen. Now the question is, how do we fetch the internal product data to render each UI? In the past, we built a Java data API server that will have exposed all the internal product service, and we will have all different kind of uh, REST endpoint here. So our UI client can make multiple REST requests to this common Java API server layer to fetch the internal part of data. But there's a problem here. Most of us are UI developer here. We all know orchestrate multiple REST API requests is cumbersome and not performing from the client device. So we improve our common Java API server. It will take the responsibility to orchestrate and fan out the request to our internal product service. Now, our client device has full control of the request response cycle. We can just make a one request to fetch the internal part of the data back. That's awesome. Oh, oops, did I skip? So, however, the data return is in generic format. Um, it's a one size fits all device. So that means Every device will fetch data that has some part doesn't belong to render its screen. And you also need to parse it. That's not very efficient. So we decide to let our UI developer to write UI data endpoint script inside this Java server. So inside this UI data endpoint script that we can write business logic to transform the internal part of data to the format that fits the individual device. Now our UI developer has full control of the data returned back to the client. And also, our UI developer doesn't like to write typed language like Java. So we let them write Groovy script for this endpoint script, and we can upload the Groovy script to a hosted Java server runtime and compile there. Now, the benefit of having this architecture is we get a serverless infrastructure. Our UI developer doesn't have to write a server or manage the server runtime in production. And we have good operational insight already built in with our Java server. So our UI developer has good visibility into the data endpoint script they write. And we have a dedicated backend team. They were managing the server dependency. For example, Tomcat or Groovy version. And all our, our, our UI team has a consistent development workflow. They have the same script to upload their Groovy script. And we have an atomic deployment workflow because all the data endpoint script are deployed together with this Java server. So it's awesome. However, over the time, we realized there's a problem with this architecture. Our developer workflow is inefficient. During implementation cycle, we need to constantly context switch between JavaScript and Groovy script. And also, when we do encode iteration, we need to upload the Groovy script to a hosted testing environment. Each upload takes two to three minutes, or maybe even longer. We have 200 UI developers. Every one of them does this 20 to 30 times a day. This workflow really slows down our developer and add low pressure to our testing server. 
And even worse, we have very limited visibility into the testing server environment. The only way to see anything is the traditional printing annotation. So you can see our developers in tier now. And also it's very difficult to reproduce a production problem inside the local machine to debug because we don't have a server set up from the first place. And even worse, we figure out that we have runtime issue here. The problem is inside data endpoint script. We have 1,000 data endpoint script and hundreds of update every day. All these scripts are running inside the Java server without isolation. A bug inside one set of data endpoint script could bring down entire UI data API fleet. <laughs> now, if one set of data API script is taking too much CPU or memory, it will starve all the other UI data API script. So we can scale them independently. And also, it's difficult to identify which data endpoint script is taking that much resource because all the operational metrics is combined. That's even worse. Now, it's also complex to operate such platform. We need to load this 1000 API into memory, compile and warm them before we can start to serve production traffic. So the server startup time takes 15 minutes. We can't scale our server fast enough to handle the large traffic increase. You feel the eternity when you try to start up your server. And also, we have hundreds of different kinds of scripts. They are all loaded inside the memory. Now, even the largest Amazon instance can run such server. And you, at this point, you can see all, all your devices need to make requests to this Java Data API server to fetch internal part of the data. So this server is a monolith. And also, it's critical if this server goes down. The UI device can't fetch any data, which means you can't watch your video. That's a bummer. So it's important that we make this UI Data API server resilient and performing. Now at this point, we know the pro and cons of our monolithic data API server. We want to decouple our UI Data endpoint script from this monolithic server and make it resilient. We collect feedback from our different UI team and to see what's their ideal next generation UI data API platform. Our developer wants to continue to have the benefit as they had in the old architecture. However, they want to fix the issue that it has. Let's see what's our developer's ideal development workflow. We want to continue to have serverless infrastructure. Our UI developer doesn't want to implement server or configure the server. We want to continue to have easy environment set up. On the top of that, we don't want a context switch anymore. And we want to have our code reflect into the server instantaneously because we are impatient. We just want to reload and have things happen. And we want to run a local server so we can attach a debug onto it. We want to reproduce a production code inside a developer's local machine precisely to debug problem. Now let's see what's our production goal. We like the operational visibility into our UI data API server. And our Java server has already integrated with our Netflix existing infrastructure. For example, operational dashboard, alerting system, discovery client. So that's a nice feature. We want to continue to have that. And we want to have countable deployment workflow. So what's on top of it is we want to get runtime isolation. And we want to scale different kind of data API service independently. For example, our TV UI team has long tail device. Some old version of data API service might only just need one server to handle the traffic. However, the latest version might need a lot of machines. So how do we achieve all these goals? Here's our solution run Node.js server inside the Docker container. JavaScript is a language all UI developers are familiar with, so no more context switch between JavaScript and Groovy script. And using Docker container, we got process isolation. 
To reproduce a version of server become easy. Just build that version of server code as a Docker image and deploy it anywhere. Now our server startup time become fast. Now at this point, we got an empty Docker container. How do we build our Node.js server has the same feature parity as we had in our Java server? We know we wanted to have operational visibility and integration with existing Netflix infrastructure. However, our UI developer wants to have serverless infrastructure. They are a great front-end developer, but they might not have specific knowledge about building a server. We obviously don't want to put the burden to have them write a Node.js server startup code like this. To fill in the gap here, we decided to build a common Node.js platform. So we will write common server-side code in this platform. For example, server startup, route creation, error handling, matrix population, and this load balancing. So our UI developer can focus on implementing business logic without worry about server-side concern. Now let's see how we build this Node.js platform. We use RESTFi framework to build our Node.js server. RESTFi has already built in with operational matrix, so it has good debuggability. We have been using RESTFi in our website for a couple years, so it's well tested in production. And also, it's one of the fastest Node.js server. It's lightweight. It's specific for build REST API service, so we only need a minimum set of dependency. Now let's see how we let our UI developer to create server route. We use RESTFi in route module to let our developer to create server route declaratively in JSON format. This way, our UI developer doesn't have to know RESTFi specific API and you make route creation easy. And also, this route configuration file become a single place where we can find out what kind of API is inside our Node.js server. It can prevent route collision. This is an example of the route configuration. You can see search is the route path, get is the route method, the value of source is the entry point script. Now what is the entry point script I just said? This is a pseudocode for a search service. We will write business logic to fetch search data and transform the data to individual device format in this middleware function. Now what's important here is we will export this middleware function here in the entry point script. This is the contract between the user land code and pl the platform. Now I just mentioned something called connect style middleware function. What is that? In Node.js server, we use a middleware function or an array of middleware function to handle a request. The middleware function will take input of request response object and next callback. In the end of the function, we will invoke the next callback to chain to the next request handler. Now in most of the case, we will have very complicated business logic, so we will export an array of middleware function in the entry point script. The platform gonna take this middleware function array and inject it into RESTFi server. By doing so, our UI developer can focus on implementing business logic, and the platform will take care of server-side bootstrap code. Now, how does our platform publish metrics? We use RESTFi audio logger plugin to publish metrics into server log. This whole bunch of text is a request log. So what's important here is you can see in the bottom of the screen that red text is a unique request ID. And we also publish request header. So these are information we can use for debug. And most importantly, we will measure request latency for each middleware handler. Now we can easily find out where our server is spending time at. This actually is a production request has performance issue. I can easily find out the RESTFi Falco route handler is the one take the longest time. So I can be very targeted to debug my performance issue here. We also want our server to be resilient. So the platform will handle common system level error. For example, if our upstream server is doing a deployment, we might get a network error. 
So the platform will retry on network error using exponential backoff algorithm. We also use RESTFI request expiry plugin to time our request when the client is no longer interesting. Why request expiry is important? It can improve the server performance. Now, in some case, our service can get DDoSed. The event queue will be filled in with a lot of requests that nobody is caring about. So using the request expiry plugin, we can quickly discard those non-active events and starting to serve active requests. And in another scenario, our upstream server can have long latency. When the data come back to our Node.js server, the client has already timed out. So we don't want to waste extra CPU cycle to parse and render the data and send it back to the client. So the platform will short circuit the middleware here. Now we can easily stand up the data API service using on top of the Node.js platform. The next step is we want to build the tooling to make it easy for our UI developer to set their environment and have a consistent development workflow. We have introduced Docker into this workflow. It's a new technology that can add learning curve. And most of our developers are use Mac or Windows as their development machine. So they need the virtual box to run local Docker container. That can add network complexity. So if all this our developer wants to manually install into their local dev box, that can take a day or two. This is too painful. That's why we decided to build tooling to streamline our developer's workflow. The tooling will encapsulate Docker complexity and make it easy to install, build, deploy a Docker container. Now this is a common workflow for a Mac OS user starting to work with our Node.js Docker container platform. We only need this four step. First is set up. It's obvious we install the Docker, VirtualBox, Node, NPN, and other related software into developer local box. And you will set up the Docker server to work with internal Docker registry. Next step, we will generate a simple code repo using human generator. Now, even new developer on board, they can quickly start up their endpoint script just by changing a working sample. And a lot of time, after we build our code, it might take a long time for us to build the CI-CD pipeline to push the code to test our prod environment. So in this initialization step, our tooling will create a CI-CD pipeline for our developer. Now when we're ready to test, we can build a local image. The tooling will handle nesting of Docker image. It will pull the Node.js platform image from internal Docker registry and build a data API server image on top of it. The final step is deploy a container locally. The tooling will start the Node.js server running inside the Docker container and create a bindmount between the host app repo into the Docker container. <coughs> now I just said something about bindmount. What is it? It's a file system mounting between host file system and the Docker container. Why do we need it? Remember, our developer wants to have fast code iteration. They want to have their code reflect inside the server instantaneously. However, a Docker image is Im immutable. We don't want to rebuild a new image every time when people change code. So using this bindmount, we can achieve the code change inf instantaneously. The tooling will watch the file system and the change can be reflected inside the Docker container and server is restarted. Now a change can be reflected in a couple seconds in compared to previously a couple minutes. And remember, we need to support hundreds of different kind of device. Our UI developer needs to test from different device to their local data API. So it's complicated to set up the network for their local development environment. And the tooling take care of that. It will make our local data API server discoverable by a common routing gateway. Now our developer can test their local data API from any device within internet. Now how do we get a better debugging method? 
Now, since we have a local server running, the tooling will set up pull forwarding on VirtualBox and enable the remote debugging. Now, our developer can choose their favorite debugger tool, install no inspector, and use our favorite Chrome dev tool to debug server-side issue as well. Our developer no longer needs to write console.log over the place inside their code and staring at testing server. Now we have a very efficient developer workflow now. How do we solve our production problem? Remember, we, have, we need to achieve runtime isolation and scale different kind of data API service independently. In the older architecture, all our UI data API service is running inside the same Java monolith. We want to decouple them out from the Java server. Each logical set of data endpoint script is running inside its own Node.js server. By doing so, we can scale them independently and monitor their operational metrics separately. And also, because they are running inside a different Node.js server, a bug inside one set of data API service wouldn't affect the other. When a client makes a request to the Node.js server, the Node.js server will, will make another request to a remote service layer which has all the internal product data exposed there. This June, we have built a search service using this new architecture and integrating to our website. We are ready to test it in production. When production comes into mind, our developers' immediate reaction is, what happens if I'm on call? How do I debug a production issue? That's critical. We don't want our UI developer to worry about production matrix. The platform has already built operational matrix in mind. The Node.js server has integrated with Netflix operational dashboard, Outlets. Outlets is a tool where I aggregate different kind of operational matrix into UI dashboard, and it's also an open source. Now, when a Node.js server makes a request, we will publish variety matrix into Outlets. For example, we will pu publish request response count, so we will know the historical RPS of our server. We can make an informed decision if we want to scale our server up or down. We also aggregate the request latency and request queue depth, so we know our server performance. And we measure server failure count and timeout count, and we can set threshold on the error rate, so we can alert our developer. And we have server restart count. If our server continuously restarting, that's an indication of severe problem inside the data endpoint script. We also publish system level metrics, for example, CPU or heap usage. So we can be alerted if there's performance or memory leak going on in production. And sometimes I might get a 500 error for a particular request. So I want to see the error log. I, however, we don't want our UI developer to take the trouble to log into production server and tell the server log. And also we have hundreds of different kind of server. We wouldn't know which request will come into which server. So we build the tooling to aggregate the server into, uh, in, we aggregate the server log into a UI tool. Now our UI developer can query the server log through this UI tool real time. At this point, we have good visibility into our Node.js server. Is that enough to debug a production issue? Actually, it's not. We have a distributed system. The first step to debug a production issue is identify which stack in the request segment has problem. When a request comes in, it will come to a routing gateway. The gateway will route the request to our Node.js server. Then Node.js server make request to a remote service layer. Finally, we fetch the internal part of data. Wouldn't it be great if we have operational metrics for each individual request segment? So we build distributed request tracing tool to measure request latency and status for each individual request segment. Now we have good visibility into entire Netflix API ecosystem. 
At this point, we have all the tooling available for us to debug. Now we are ready to test in production with full scale. However, any new architecture could cause an unexpected issue. We have over 80 million subscribers. We don't want to test a new architecture while imp impacting our sub subscribers' experience. So we decide to run shadow traffic. What is a shadow traffic here? When a device makes a request to our routing gateway, it will duplicate the request. One go to the monolith data API server. The other go to the new Node.js Docker container platform. Now only the monolithic data API server will return the data back to our client. The Node.js Docker container platform will only return the data back to the routing gateway, and the data is dropped there. This way, we can test our new architecture without impact customer's experience. At this point, we have slayed our data API monolith and make each data API service running inside its own Node.js Docker container. In production, we have achieved runtime isolation. We can scale different kind of data API service independently. We have rich operational insight into our Node.js server. During development, we have much efficient developer workflow. We can reproduce a production problem in developer's local machine precisely to debug issue. This architecture improvement has made big impact to our business and developer's workflow. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. If you are interested in working in Node.js or Docker container, feel free to reach out to me after the talk. And our company is hiring. If you are interested, please uh, look for our job website. Thank you. Thank you.